everyone, welcome back to the part 4 of the IoT Masterclass from the Block IoT YouTube channel. Today's video is very exciting because it's packed with a lot of information that is going to be very useful for your upcoming IoT project. This is the part 4 of the IoT Masterclass. I hope you have enjoyed the video so far and you have been able to follow along and build your IoT sample project. Just as a quick recap, what have we done so far in last 3 parts? In part 1, we unboxed a Raspberry Pi 5, we installed the required software, and overall we prepared our Raspberry Pi 5 to work as our test IoT server. In part 2, we wrote a Python script to publish and subscribe to a couple of MQTT topics running on our Mosquito MQTT broker on our Raspberry Pi 5. We also created a simple dashboard on Grafana on part 2. In the last session, which was part 3 of this IoT Masterclass, we added a Siemens S7-1200 PLC and learned how to connect our PLC to the MQTT network using the LMQTT library. We walk you through the every step, so make sure you watch that video if you haven't done already. So in this video, which is part 4, we are adding extra features to our IoT solution. This is our simplified version of IoT solution architecture drawing. And as you can see on our Raspberry Pi 5 IoT server, we have Mosquito MQTT broker. We have a Python code which subscribes to two different MQTT topics, which are temperature one and humidity one. This is just a sample to keep the videos short, but this can be thousands of different topics. Also, our Python code logs the data into an InfluxDB database and ultimately a Grafana dashboard visualizes the data stored in our InfluxDB. And as I mentioned in previous video, we have added a Siemens S7-1200 PLC, which could be S7-1500 because both are being programmed in TI Portal software and they both support LMQTT client library. So in today's video, we are going to add a Siemens Unified Comfort Panel to our system to publish some new data to our MQTT topics and also to subscribe the data which are on our Mosquito MQT broker running on our Raspberry Pi 5. So again, this is just a test architecture and one of the beauty of IoT and MQTT is that it's very scalable and flexible. You can add thousands of devices similar manner that I showed you. By the way, if you are not familiar with Siemens Unified Comfort Panel, don't worry at all. We have another complete tutorial for it, which walks you through from the unboxing of the device and writing your first program and overall it's a great resource for you to getting started with Siemens Unified Comfort Panel if you are totally brand new in Siemens platform or perhaps you have used the older version of the HMIs which were Comfort Panel and so on. So based on this diagram, our Raspberry Pi 5 IoT server is connected to the router over Wi-Fi and also a laptop and another tablet or computer is also connected to the router over the Wi-Fi and our PLC and HMIs are connected to the router over Ethernet connection and a network switch. So every device on this drawing are connected together in the same subnet. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the today's topic which is connecting a Siemens Unified Comfort Panel to an MQTT broker in a few simple steps. There are different ways to connect a Unified Comfort Panel to MQTT broker, but in this video, we are going to use a very cool feature of these panels, which is called Industrial Edge. As I mentioned in the WinCC Unified Crash Course, the Siemens Unified Comfort Panel are Linux-based machine. So they are very flexible and powerful. They are not just an old-fashioned HMI, which are just sitting in a corner of a site or plant to visualize some data and interact with the user. I mean, they are real Linux machine, so they can run different tasks in parallel. We can talk a lot about Siemens Industrial Edge, which is out of the scope of this video, but for now, what is important to know is that we are going to install Node-RED, which is a low-code programming language on a Siemens Unified Comfort Panel to act as a middleware to read the runtime tags from the HMI and send the information to the MQTT broker using some graphical objects. I know it sounds very complicated, but I'll show you how easy it is. Feel free to follow along if you have a hardware handy. 
I mentioned, the Siemens Industrial Age is a complete different tutorial. Maybe I create another playlist for that. But for now, I'm just going to focus on everything that you need to connect your unified comfort panel to an MQTT broker. The first step is navigating to this page on Siemens Industrial Online Support and search for this title, Industrial Age Application. Here you have three different examples. And today we are just going to use the node red one. There is a very comprehensive document about it and you can read through if you are curious to know more about Industrial Edge. This document walks you through all the steps needed to create an app or so-called Edge app for your unified comfort panel. And then this tutorial shows you how you can install your Edge app on your unified comfort panel. Once you have followed this document and you have a Node-RED app installed on your unified comfort panel, we can proceed to the next steps and I'm going to switch the camera on and show you on the real hardware how to proceed to the next steps. Okay, now we are at the setting page of the Simatic HMI unified comfort panel panel and we have different options on the left side. Again if you don't have any background knowledge in Siemens comfort panels please watch the other video which I walk you through all the steps and you get up to a speed in less than half an hour. So we need to navigate to the app section and as you can see there are different options. So what we need for this video to go to Simatic Edge and make sure the Simatic Edge is enabled. Basically, after activation of this option, besides your HMI runtime, which interact with physical hardware, such as PLC or other devices, the Simatic Edge runtime will run on your HMI in parallel and can execute the Simatic Edge apps. That's all you needed to do on the HMI panel. And once you enable it, you can access your Edge management console from a browser connected to the same network. So we'll proceed to the next steps. So now the Simatic Edge app is enabled on our comfort panel. To access your Edge management console, just simply type in the IP address of your HMI panel in a browser. And you need to select Simatic Edge Management. You need to enter your credential to log in. This username and password can be defined in TIA portal when you create the HMI project. So I just type in my username and password. So this is your industrial edge management console hosted on your unified comfort panel and you have different options and the first one is the apps and as you can see here i have an app called nodred again i don't need to explain how to install this app this document shows you everything and just to let you know this is very flexible you can customize your icons you can manage different versions and so on I'm not going to spend so much time on this industrial edge management page because it's out of the scope of this video. I'll create another video about the industrial edge later. But for now, all you need to know is to make sure your Node-RED app is running. To do that, click on management and you can see the status is running. Okay, let's jump into our TIA portal project and see what do we need to do in TIA portal. The first thing, as I mentioned, you need to define your username and password under the security setting, which allows you to log into your HMI and also your industrial edge management console. So for today's demonstration, we are using a MTP 1200 unified comfort panel and we just have two simple screens. As you can see, we have two gauges and one slider object and also one dedicated page for trends. And these objects are connected to two tags and we name them after our MQTT topics, which are humidity one and temperature one. So as you can see, these are internal tags. So the communication between the HMI and our PLC will be MQTT, not Profinet, not Modbus or something similar. So here how the project will work. We have a gauge that shows the current value of temperature one. And if you remember from the previous video, the temperature one is getting updated by our S7-1200 CPU over MQTT and LMQTT client library. In a nutshell, our analog input zero is connected to temperature one MQTT topic. And that's what we are going to show on our HMI. On the left side, we have a gauge for humidity and also a slider bar to just change the value or simulate some value because there's no physical device connected to this tag or MQTT topic. 
and the trend object simply shows the historical value of these two tags which are humidity one and temperature one so as you can see the project is very simple you don't need to be worried about anything about mqtt or industrial edge or anything like that on ti portal you program your hmi in a traditional way once you have your sample project you just download to your unified comfort panel and we are ready for the next steps So now we are back to our industrial edge management console and we need to execute our node red edge app so to do that you just need to click on the node red app and a new page will open i have to be honest i wasn't a fan of node red because i feel more comfortable with python and overall scripting over the low code and graphical programming but after doing this project i started to like it because it's very simple to implement a complicated task using just drag and drop of the graphical object there are a ton of uh, tutorial about node red what it is and how it works so I'm not going to spend much time about it, but I need to explain how I use the Node-RED to interact with my HMI runtime tags and how my system works as an integrated IoT solution. So as you can see, my program has two main sections. In section one, I read my humidity tags from my HMI runtime. And the way I do that, there are a few nodes in Node-RED that allow you to interact with your HMI runtime in Node-RED. So if you scroll down, there is a section for open pipe and I use the subscribe tags automatically subscribes to the value changes in the HMI tags and transfers the information as a payload to the next section. So as you can see on the lower right side of the screen, this object is connected to my humidity one tag, which are also connected to a slider object and a gauge, which I showed you previously. So the nodes are very simple. All you need to do is just double click on the nodes and you just need to define the tag names. You can monitor the raw values that are coming from these nodes using a debug node. But for sure, we need to do some data manipulation on the incoming data to convert the raw data into our desired format, which we have defined previously. After reading the HMI tag, we convert it to our desired format. I can show you quickly here. I'm just using a change node and I'm just adding this H semicolon and the, the value of that tag. And ultimately, I'm using an MQTT out node to send my tag value to the MQTT broker. So as you can see here, I've defined my server to be 192.168.0.104 and this is basically the IP address on my Raspberry Pi 5 which my Mosquito MQT broker is running on and then I need to define my topic so that's it really for reading HMI tag from the runtime and send the value to MQTT broker it's just three simple blocks so in the second section of my program in Node-RED, I need to subscribe to the temperature one topic which are coming from my S7-1200 CPU. And then I want to write that value to a HMI tag to visualize the data on the gauge on the right side of my HMI as you can see on the lower side of the window. So similar to MQTT out, there is another node for MQTT in. And if you scroll to the node palettes, you will see them under the network for MQTT in and MQTT out. So the configuration is very simple. You just double click on the MQTT in. And again, you need to define your server and the topic that you need to subscribe to. Because in this project, I'm sending a string values. I'm just using this node to parse the string. And overall, after this node, I have a single numerical value. And before connecting my incoming values to the right tags node, I need to define what's my tag name and what is the value. So again, I'm using a change node and I'm just defining the tags to be temperature one and the tags value to be the payload which is coming from the previous node. And there is really no setting on the right tags. You just need to give it a name. Once everything is done, you just need to deploy your flow. Let's just clear the messages to start from scratch. Okay, now let's enable our PLC to publish the value of analog input zero, the temperature one topic. 
and again if you remember from the previous video we just need to trigger the i0.1 and once that i0.1 is triggered or block is enabled and as you can see on the right side the values are published into the MQTT broker and I can subscribe to those values from any other device it can be a cloud instance or in my case it can be a Grafana or any other piece of software so let's just change the value of analog zero to make sure our system is working so I just change the potentiometer to simulate the analog value zero. So as you can see, the value is changed to 65. I just rotate it a little bit more, 75. Let's just decrease it, 55. On this gauge, which is connected to temperature one tag, I see the real time values. And again, these objects are not connected to the PLC over Profinet or any other protocol. They are connected to the MQTT broker and these values are coming from MQTT broker. So if I just change the potentiometer on analog zero, you will see the changes on the temperature gauge. As you can see, 62. And you can see the same values in node red debugged window. Just decrease it again. 45 23 so just to make sure everything is working let's open our grafana dashboard which we created previously to make sure the values are showing on grafana dashboard as well so now i have the dashboard open on my smartphone i just put it in a corner so you can see the hmi screen as well so as you can see the values are sync and if i change the analog zero you will see the changes on Grafana dashboard and also on my HMI and on Node-RED as well. So right now let's just increase it to 54 and as you can see the dashboard is also changing. 59, 78 and so on. Open our Grafana dashboard on our laptop as well. So to do that you just simply enter the IP address of your Grafana and port 3000 go to your dashboards and as you can see the values are synced here as well because everything is stored in our influx db database and it's very easy to access the information from everywhere and as you know you can use mqtt explorer to test the values as well so now let's just change the value of this slider which is connected to the humidity one topic and the values should be published to the relevant mqtt topic and here i'm just going to monitor it on mqtt explorer to make sure everything is working so as you can see i have the real-time values on my hmi and on my mqtt broker All right that was it for today's video which was part four of our iot master class today i just showed you how to do it using Node-RED on Unified Comfort Panel. But these panels are very powerful. I really mean it. You can run your own custom code as an Edge app on the Unified Comfort Panel, or you can make your own custom web control and use it directly on your HMI runtime. In this masterclass, I try to keep the example simple and show you how you can implement an IoT project in a few steps. Please let me know if you have any suggestions if you are interested to know more about industrial edge from Siemens, please make sure you subscribe to the Block IoT YouTube channel so you get notified once I upload a new video. Until the next time, have a great day or night.